guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello. Welcome to my little podcast. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast. And uh, I just want to say hey. Um, this is a little show about crochet and knit and hand dyeing yarn. And I share a little bit about myself and what I like to do. And I just like to have fun and hang out and chat. So I hope you enjoy. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you're a new viewer, hey, you've come to a fun little awkward show. I hope you enjoy watching this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoy seeing some works in progress, some finished objects, some dye work, me talking about dyeing, which is kind of fun. And um, yeah, I also have an Etsy shop. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Kayleen and I am the principal fiber artist and dyer behind Little Bean Crochet and Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn. And I am on social media as Little Bean Crochet on Instagram, Little Bean Crochet Shop on Facebook, and I have an Etsy shop, littlebeancrochet.etsy.com. I do shop updates and shop news at the end of the podcast, so if you're interested in that, just sit tight and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Um, I try and keep these videos relatively short so that you're not sitting through something that's super long for an awkward long period of time, but I also want to enjoy myself and just relax and have fun and just chat. Hopefully today is a lot less interrupty than it was last week. If you haven't seen last week's video, I'll put a little link to my podcast playlist, but we were interrupted, I think a total of 23 times during filming. So I tried my best to keep it interesting and engaging. Uh, if you enjoyed it or found it humorous, that's great. And if you didn't and you shut it off, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not every week uh, for me is that smooth and it's just because I have two very young kids my daughter Cecilia is almost three and my son Tucker today turns one year old so happy birthday um, a little shop announcement I'll just put it here on the screen but there's a little coupon code celebrating my son's birthday it's happy B day Tucker and it gets you 15% off today and tomorrow so if you're interested in that and you're watching this before Thursday of this week which is the 18th, um, then you're in luck. And if you are, if you've seen the yarn that you like on my previous podcasts, some some of it is still up in my shop, is ready to ship. You can just grab it and get 15% off, just because it's my son's birthday. <laughs> but anyway, um, wow, I'm so splotchy. Ugh. So I'm tired a lot of the time, and I shower and take care of myself as best I can. But it's like makeup. Who has time? Other moms who are podcasters like put makeup on. Ugh, how do you even feel like you have the time to do that? I tried doing it the last couple of weeks, just popping a little like concealer on my freckles and like my spots. I have so many spots on my face. But this week, I can't be bothered. So, all right. So, what should we start with? Why don't we start with some dye? So, I've been busy this week doing a lot of orders. Um, dye to order stuff and shipping out a lot of ready to ship items. Um, I did, I'll put a little picture if I can find it, I did some dyeing of Weasley, Weasley's Wizard Weezes gradient and I also did some dyeing of a couple of my other colorways that are variegated um, Harbor Storm and Dirigible Plums and those all went out in one big order which was a lot but great. Um, <clears throat> my husband said he saw the little the Hanks, the, the buyer asked to cake them up. So I cake them pretty loosely. I don't want to stretch the fiber or, you know, damage the yarn or anything, but I do offer caking. If you're going to use it when you get it and you want it caked up, just ask. So I caked up these two, these four skeins, those two colors. And so I had it on the table, ready to ship. I had like the label out and the packaging out. And I was just waiting for the gradient to dry. And my husband came over and he looks at the yarn and he goes, those would make a nice baby blanket. And you know what? <laughs> it actually kind of would. Uh, the Dirigible Plums colorway is a really pretty peachy pink color. And it has some darkness into it. I did make a hat. Let me get it. So I did make a hat for my daughter using this colorway. And I showed it a couple of weeks ago. But this is Dirigible Plums. And you know, it's pretty peachy pink. It has light and dark shades of peach and pink. And I think it would make a nice baby blanket. Um, and then the same with Harbor Storm. Harbor Storm has some deep navy 
and some bright kind of aqua colors, like almost the color of my t-shirt. And I think I'd make a nice blue tone for a blanket. I don't know. It was like this revelation Ty, Ty said to me, those would make a really nice baby blanket. Who, who is he? He's thinking about yarn. Husbands, who does that? Whose husbands do that? I don't think so. Um, so yeah, I was doing a lot of that. And then yesterday I was up super early because I wanted to dye some gradients, not one skein of gradients, but like a gradient set. So like 50 gram skeins and do a set of five ingredient. And I couldn't decide what color I wanted and I ended up deciding, okay, I'll do black and shades of gray because that's a really nice neutral and a lot of people would like it. And I was actually super pleased with how it came out. So I did it on my everyday sock and I just wanna talk about the dye process. So here's the gradient with varying levels of darkness. That's the full range. And it was actually a really fun and interesting dye. So the way I had to dye it was I had to make a, uh, a big stock of dye. So what you do to make a stock is you mix water and the dye powder in a certain concentration and then you can more easily measure and distribute the dye into the water, especially if you're creating a tonal or um, or a, you know a gradient set where you really want to have a nice consistency of color across all sets. It actually came out very very consistent across all the lots. So I did so you can see the shade range, even though these two were dyed in different batches, are almost identical. You know, there's a slight variation in tone between the sets, but the overall feeling of the set is exactly the same. So it's actually quite nice. So I did 50 grams a piece in each tone, and I thought that would be a nice shawl a nice gradient shawl. So if you're working on a shawl, like I think it's Flotus, I think the Flotus shawl. I can't be sure of the name. I'll put a picture and the a, a description. But it, there's a shawl that works specifically using a gradient yarn and a contrasting yarn. So you use something like this in between. It's like the variegated yarn and then the darkest and then the variegated yarn and then the middle and then the variegated yarn and the lightest. So it's, it's kind of like goes, I don't know if I'm, I'm doing a good job. Anyway, but dyeing this stuff was really fun because I've never made a stock before because I usually just work in very small batches so I can use um, measurements of the actual dye powder to create certain effects and colors. But I really wanted to make sure that I could get consistent tone across the sets that I was dying and it worked it actually worked I was very very happy um, the only issue that I ended up having was on my darker skeins this is the tie for the skein but the ties on one of my skeins ended up leaving a resist so what that is is when something is blocking the yarn from being absorbing the dye. So you can either, you know, twist your yarn up really tight and then that creates resistance on the inner parts of the skein and it, the dye won't absorb into those parts. So what ended up happening accidentally was that the the ties on one of my darker skeins ended up too tight and it created this resist and it was just this white streak across the entire thing like blindingly white. It wasn't even a shade of gray or something that I would feel comfortable selling in that way. So I was like, what do I do? Do I just throw it in the dye pot? Because you didn't, I didn't want to alter. It was on a darker skein. And this is as black as I could get it. And it's pretty, pretty dark gray black. It's tonal. So there are variations in the, in the skein. Let me see here. There's any change. So you can see there's lighter tones of gray fading into darker tones, almost black. I really tried to get these as deep black, but I didn't want to alter the color that much. So what I ended up doing was, oh, see, I'll have to redo this one. So this is what happens. So the tie for the yarn was too tight in this area. And what happened was it just laid across the yarn in the pot. Even though I try and make sure it's loose before it goes in, those things still happen. So I'll have to re-dye this piece, but it was interesting. 
it was a fun it was a fun adventure for dyeing and so I do have them up in my shop but I'll go over that later um, if you guys have questions about the methods that I use to dye or if you want to see demonstrations of how I dye certain things definitely um, send me a message you can leave a comment below here or in my Ravelry group or you can just contact me on Instagram that's probably the fastest way to contact me so all right so that's pretty much all the dyeing I've done I was going to dye a little bit this afternoon I've been brewing up some ideas for a nice fall colorway again a Harry Potter themed colorway because uh, I just can't get enough so I am currently in the planning stages of that and I was hoping to do an experimental dye this afternoon to see if I liked the idea of the colorway if it was going to come out the way I thought it would so um, you can stay tuned for that if you follow me on Instagram you'll probably see it first before next week um, that's usually where I end up posting a lot of my updates so all right let's get into works in progress so I still have the mermaid tail blanket in progress I haven't picked it back up only because it's been extremely hot here it's been nearly 100 degrees 100% humidity like you walk outside and you can't even breathe it's so humid so I've not wanted to pick that up at all this week and I'm so close to the end of this blanket I just want it to be done but a couple of problems one it's been super hot and two it's just in a tangled mess right now the skein of blanket burnout blanket yarn that I was using is just tall tangled up and that blanket sticks to itself uh, because of the way the material is. It's, you know, that fuzzy acrylic, like almost, you know, like the fuzzy underside of a, of a blanket. It's just that's how the yarn is. And so what ends up happening is that it's a lot of friction and it sticks together. So it's hard to get untangled. So I have to untangle that, then finish the fin, then stitch it all together, do the border and I'll be finished. It really won't take me very long, but I am just not, not into it right now it's too hot the other work in progress that I have are my socks which I've made a bit of progress since I talked to you last um, I've made probably another six rows on the foot so it's starting to look even more sock like and it comes almost halfway down my foot now here we go so there it is, the Rose City Rollers. They are still on my needles. I am finding now I've overcorrected. So last podcast I was talking about these rows down here and how some of them were quite loose. So then I've corrected my stitch and how I hold my yarn, but now I feel as if my stitches are too tight. <laughs> so I'm going to have to readjust and reevaluate my... Um, my yarn holding technique it's really easy to see so you can see here how the stitches are super tight and close together and then here they're much much looser so you can see there's a distinctive difference between these stitches and these oh you can see dye look dye fingers from yesterday um from the correction on my black skein i usually wear gloves to prevent this stuff but i was doing a quick fix so like getting it saturated the area that needed dye in the dye then heated up and steamed and then rinsed and washed and cooled so it was like I didn't even bother putting gloves on at that point mistake mistakes we make uh, anyway so here's the really tight stitches and here's the real loose stitches so I, I have to find a happy medium with my knitting um, I knit continental style I'm used to the tension of crochet and I feel like my tension for knit is looser than I anticipated to be so sure I can pull my knitting very very tight but um, I, I feel like I don't have the same level of consistency or control as I do with my crochet hook. So um, that will be a project for this week. Again, it's, I don't think it's going to be a wearable sock for me, but I'm using this kind of as a learning experience. I also am really excited with how this color is working up. I think it's really cool looking. This is Lighthouse Sunset on my Everyday Sock Base, which is a 25 nylon 75 superwash merino. So yeah. That's it. That's the color. So I've made, you know, what is six rows? Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, like half an inch. Not very much progress, but I have finished objects that I can't show you because they're already gone, but I can put pictures and I have another finished object that I designed yesterday. So, um, 
Oh, I have another work in progress that I can't really show you because it's in a bag in the other room and I don't feel like dragging it out, but I have a commission work piece to crochet together the squares of a knit blanket. So I'm working on that as well and my game is to be done by Saturday so I can bring it to the customer, but I probably will end up posting a picture of it on my social media just as posterity, like, hey, I did this. So it's really fun. Okay, so, um, so finished objects. Let's talk about the ones that I can't show you. So I did some commission work over the weekend for a local photographer and I made two hats and if you follow me on Instagram, you saw them. They took me less than a day to make, but I made a little sleepy owl with little closed eyes and a Yoda. So I'll pop a picture right here. Uh, it came out, they both came out really cute. So they're newborn size hats and they were for a photo shoot, which was really cute. I can't wait to see pictures of them on the baby. It's, it's adorable. And then, let's see, another work in progress, finished object. I don't think I finished anything else over the weekend that I can't show you, but this is one thing that I did yesterday. And I haven't really, I haven't posted this yet, uh, but this is a little teddy bear cowl. So it's just a scarf, no, a cowl scarf with kind of a hood and little teddy bear ears. So this I made, I designed a pattern for it for my local yarn shop. One of the owners of the yarn shop contacted me and she said, hey, can you write up a pattern for uh, like a cowl or a scarf that looks like a teddy bear? So um, I said, yeah, sure, I can do that. So yesterday I ended up working on this and I, I thought it would be pretty easy and it was. And she said, you know, design it for a toddler. So I had my son and my daughter both put it on and it fits both of them. Um, this was done in super washed. Um, <laughs> Cascade 128 Superwash Merino Wool. It's a worsted weight wool and it is in the color ginger. So it's a little ginger bear. They kind of look like Ewoks when they put it on. So it's really cute. Hey, okay, so we are back. Snack was a success. We got snack all set up. Um, and it was nectarines. What a lovely, healthy snack. Isn't my toddler so lovely? Okay, so, oh, I probably should close that door. Whatever. Um, I only keep that door closed because of the baby. I don't want the baby going in there. All my yarn is in there. Oh, you see that little white wardrobe? Um, okay, so yeah, we were talking about this. So this is in Cascade 128 Superwash Wool. It's just a basic cowl. I constructed a hood around it with a ribbed border and some ears. And it fits a toddler. So I'll put a picture here of Cece and Tucker both wearing this. They're a little blurry because neither of them really wanted to wear it, but I can't blame them because it is so incredibly hot. So I designed this for our local yarn shop um, and I'm having the owner test the pattern for me so that I can put the pattern up on Ravelry. So if you're interested in this pattern, just keep a lookout. Um, I don't think I'll charge anything for it. I don't know. I haven't decided um, how good of a pattern this is. If it's if it's chargeable worthy, it's not very complicated to me, but to someone else maybe it is a little more complicated, but it does look super cute when it's on a baby. Oh, I wonder if it'll fit me. Let's try this on. Oh yeah, oh yeah, look at this. <laughs> oh my head is too big. It's too big, my head is too big. Oh look at this, it's like all stretched out. I guess if you're an adult you could wear this, but it's not very flattering. It's not very flattering. <laughs> Again, and I'm not a hats person, so I can't, I can't really tell you that this is worthwhile thing for an adult to make for themselves, but it's really cute on kids. They look like little Ewoks. Okay, that was embarrassing. So, all right, kids are much cuter. Here's the pictures. Again, let's just not forget what the children look like uh, in, the little, in the little hood. So, all right, so I don't have anything else that is finished aside, what is this? What is this? What is this? Okay, I don't have anything else finished for 
yarn or for crochet or for knit. So I think that's the end of my, oh my goodness, my hair is so crazy. Um, okay, so I don't have anything else to talk about as far as finished objects or for uh, works in progress. Those were the only things that I had done in terms of dyeing, crochet, and knitting. So let's move on to the Ask Me Anything portion. And I asked on my Instagram and on my Facebook page, and also there's a thread in the Ravelry group. So if you ever think of a question that you want to ask me, you're welcome to also put it there in the Ask Me Anything thread. Um, so I put up a call to action to see if anybody had any specific questions for me. So I'm going to check here right now on Oh, all the baby pictures. My son, it's his birthday today. If you check that out at the beginning of the podcast and my my memories are all just full of like little little infant photos. There are no new posts in the Ravelry thread and so just a reminder in the Ravelry thread we do have a thread open for a little crochet or knit along of a spooky nature for Halloween it's running from now until you know October 1st and the the rules are a little bit loose so as long as you are knitting something or crocheting something of a spooky nature spooky themed or using a spooky themed yarn or a you know, a more ominous themed yarn, um, feel free to enter your project into the Revelry group. And if you have a finished object, put it in the finished objects thread. Um, we welcome either craft, crochet, or knit. It doesn't really matter. And it's just for fun. And if we have enough people participating, we can do a little giveaway. If not, then we'll save our giveaway for a bigger crochet or knit along. But I just thought it would be nice to do a little bit of something for everybody if that's something you're interested in. So I'm still getting text messages. Oh. Let's count this on the interruptions list. Bing, bing, bing. Sending a loving text message to my husband. I love you, but please don't text me right now because I'm filming. Because I'm filming. Okay. All right, so Ravelry, there are no questions in the Ravelry group. Okay, so let's go to Instagram, which I know there's a question in Instagram, at least one, and there's another one that I missed from a couple of weeks ago. It was posted after I had filmed. So let's go into it. Ask me anything. Okay, so this question comes uh, the wonderful and nitty by nature, and I'll put her her um, information here on the screen. Um, her name is Melissa, and she designs and does uh, stitch markers and progress keepers. You've probably seen her on other uh, podcasts. She is she's pretty much awesome, and she's sending me actually some prizes for a giveaway. So I'm excited the package is in the mail and I'm just kind of waiting to get it. So if we have enough people in the crochet or knit along, then we're going to have some really cool prizes, including yarn and stitch markers. So it's a win-win, it's a win-win, it's a win-win. Anyway, so, okay, so Knitty by Nature, Miss Melissa asks me, since you started knitting, what seems to be your favorite thing you like to knit? Socks, hats, shawls, cowls, etc. So I don't know, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't have enough discipline to sit and just knit and decide what I like or I don't like. So I I think I'm going to end up liking things that I like to crochet in the same way. Like I think I'm going to like knitting things as, in the same way as I like to crochet things. So like my favorite things to crochet are usually like hats and mittens, gloves, scarves. I find them very fun to do and I find them very, you know, relaxing. Shawls are kind of fun too. I'm not a super fan of using fingering weight yarn, but I'm opening myself up to the possibilities that come with fingering weight yarns because I enjoy the final product. Um, socks I'm enjoying. Uh, this little sock is making, making its little debut. You know, I, I'm such a perfectionist that I end up looking at all the mistakes that I make when I knit. And 
I know things will get better the more that I do it and it will get easier and it will feel a lot more natural to me. So I'm just kind of keeping that in mind when I get frustrated. Um, but I, I, I've enjoyed the sock. I haven't tried to knit a hat yet. A very long time ago I knit a scarf and uh, it was okay. I didn't, I just did it on a pair of, you know, craft store straight needles. I didn't have anything special in mind. Um, and then that honey cow ended up frogging it because I didn't care much for the pattern, mostly because I don't care to purl. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> Let's stop complaining. Um, I enjoy knitting and I've enjoyed knitting these socks. So I'm going to say, yes, I enjoy knitting socks. Likely I will enjoy knitting hats and scarves and cowls and possibly shawls because I do enjoy crocheting shawls. Um, so we'll just see. I'm just learning and trying my best when I have time to really sit down and focus on doing it because I do need to pay attention to what I'm doing. I, I have a lot of focus in my hands. It does hurt my eyes a bit more doing it, but I think it's because I have to like physically look at my work. So I'm looking at these tiny stitches and I'm just going and going and going. And I tend to knit with my fingertips. It, I, you knitters out there, if you're watching and you want to comment on this. So, so my socks here are in magic loop. And I'll show you how I hold my needles and everything. So I'm sliding my stitches up. And I'm pulling out my, my needle. Ooh, here's my yarn. Okay, so here's my needle. Here's my yarn. So when I'm knitting, I don't know if anybody else does this, but I tend to knit just with like, I don't hold the whole needle. I end up holding just the tips of the needle. So when I'm doing my knit work, I literally am just, I don't know how to describe what I'm doing here. So like, oh no, don't drop. Of course I'm gonna drop a stitch, so much pressure. Um, so I'm knitting and I'm literally, I'm literally just using the end of my fingers to knit, 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 knit. And I find that like, I don't know if it like hurts my hand. It doesn't hurt my hand, but I feel a little fatigued when I do it between looking at the small stitches and you know, my hand being so like not tense. What's the word? I'm looking for a specific word here. Like my, my focus is very still. I'm very, Mom brain, why? Why must you do this to me? I'm very rigid. Maybe the word is rigid. Word is rigid. My fingers are very rigid on the needle. I have a very specific task and I get so nervous that I'm going to drop a stitch that I'm not relaxing my fingers to the point where I feel comfortable. I feel very I feel very tense when I do it, even though I have a loose knit in general, like a loose knit stitch, like I'm not pulling my iron too tightly because I tend not to do that in crochet anyway. So I find that I'm doing the same, but like as far as like holding the needles, I'm so nervous. Like I'm, I'm focusing on every little thing that my fingers are doing that even looking up like this and taking a stitch off of my needle, I get so nervous that I'm just gonna yank all the stitches off my needle. So row so I don't lose myself here. All right, so that's the end of the row. So that's how long it took me to knit 32 stitches. Um, but I just feel very like, I feel very hard. I feel like it's not like a fluid extension of my body. And to me, that's, I think the most frustrating part because with a crochet hook, I just feel like it's such a natural thing. And I know that only comes really with a lot of practice and that comes with a lot of time. So I just have to invest the time and I know that, um, but it's, it's hard um, in the beginning, I suppose, of learning anything new that you just want everything to feel naturally and you want everything to work out well. And you, you just, you know, some things you just pick up and it's very easy. Like for me, dying was so, it was so easy for me. Like I just felt like it was this natural extension of myself in art, in, in, in fiber. Just the same as crochet, when I learned crochet, like I do remember being frustrated and having, you know, these times where I just felt very foreign and just like, what am I doing? But it was a lot quicker 
of a pickup for me than knitting because knitting I've tried to do several times over the course of my life and I just it just never feels natural to me this is the most natural knitting has ever felt so um, so I'm enjoying these little projects because I know these are going to take the lowest amount of investment in time I do want to knit a shawl and I'm trying to think of something that I can use this gradient yarn for because I really want to knit up something on a gradient I have so many dreams 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 but anyway I'm enjoying small projects at the moment so I think that was the only question my husband said he asked me a question on Instagram and I for the life of me cannot find this question and I've looked through every ask me anything picture to see if he had asked me something and I just cannot find it I just don't even know where it could be not there not there not there nope so yeah I don't know um he didn't text me a question through all those texts he did not text me a question but that's okay he knows the answers to my questions anyway so we'll just double check Facebook one more time to be sure no new questions came in while I was rambling about knitting and nobody something for another snack how about a candy a candy what kind of candy a chocolate yes chocolate okay. all right <clears throat> so there were no new questions so that's the end of those sections um, yeah, so I guess the last thing to do is to do a shop update. So if you are interested in a shop update and you want to hear about the yarn that is in the shop or going in the shop, um, you can stay tuned right now. And if not, I'll see you guys next week. It was wonderful to chat with you and just have a little bit of time um, to talk. So if you don't know, my shop information is Little Bean Crochet on Etsy. And I have a ton of stuff that is still up for grabs in my ready to ship section. Um, it includes some of my Stranger Things colorways. Uh, and the newest thing that came into the shop this week were these gradients. Ooh, these gradient sets. So these are 250 grams total weight. So they're 50 grams a piece of yarn. And so it, it ends, up, ends up being. I don't know somewhere around 1100 yards of of uh, fiber so isn't that nice nice contrast look at these nice contrast gray and white not white but like light gray and black um so yeah so that's enough for a full size shawl for most shawl patterns uh i was trying to think of that name I think it's the Flota shawl, and if I'm right, I'm probably going to put some snarky text on the screen saying, Kelly, you were right, it was the Flota shawl, blah, blah, blah. But um, different shawls that require gradient or different colored yarns um, to do in like a pattern block. So I'll put some links down below for suggested shawls to use gradients for, and for like, especially this size. So these are 50 grams a piece. So this is a substantial amount of yarn. Um, so you could make your entire shawl out of these five skeins. Uh, if you wanted to put in accent colors or, you know, you were thinking of having a ridiculous amount of color in your shawl, then you could pair it with a more variegated yarn as your, you know, in between your gradients. So there's another, there was a shawl pattern I was looking at. It's a two color shawl, but I think you easily could put more than two colors into it. It's by uh, Holy Locatelli. I think that's how you say her name, but I think it's like downtown line. And I'll put a picture of it here. But it was one of those shawls that's worked in short rows and it calls for two colors and you're working them. So like, I think your color B ends up being, um, you know, the more in between lines with the eyelets and then color A is the color that's like the main body and it kind of switches. So color A is more prominent on one of the shawl and it's less prominent on the other and same with color B. It's more prominent, but you could probably use a gradient for that. And there's another, there's a crochet one 
let's look it up. There's a crochet one that looked very similar because I'm trying to figure out some ideas for shawls in short rows because I'm not really keen on doing three or four hundred knit stitches across a single row. It just does not seem fun to me because I do like little things. So working in short rows, I was thinking, looking for projects. Anyway, so let's go to Ravelry and find out exactly where, let us see. Da, 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 da. Let's go to my library. What is it called? Roses and Thorns. Okay, by Mary, Mary Renji. It's a very similar looking shawl to the shawl by, I think it's Ho, Holy, Joey, Joji, Jimmy. I don't know how to say her name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's the downtown line. That was the one I was looking at. So I think you could incorporate gradient into that as well, only because of the structure. So it's worked in short rows. I was thinking about doing Cecilia's like a shawl for Cecilia, but doing like a miniature version of something like this using the Lolo Diddy yarn that I got, the MCN. But yeah, so you could use a gradient for something like that or for Mama Chi Designs, the coffee shop shawl if you have a DK gradient. I mean, I think you could even use a fingering weight yarn or an Aran weight yarn uh, for it, but she works it from Shawl in a Ball, which is a Lion brand gradient, um, but I think you could easily work it from something that's like this, where the gradient, you can just change yarns. Um, what was another one I was looking at? I'm sorry, this is very unprofessional. There was another one that I had. You certainly could work Simple Scallops Shawl, the one that I did. I'll put a picture. It is by Christy Ashmore. Christy. Yes, I got it right. Christy Ashmore. Uh, it's the one I did in the Flowers for Dobby colorway. That's very easily worked in gradient and fingering weight yarn. This would be more than enough yarn to do a shawl of whatever size you like. You can start light and then dark, dark and then light. It doesn't really matter. Um, what else? There was another one I was looking at. And I cannot find it in my library, so it must not have gotten put into my library when I purchased it. Fine, I'll have to hunt that email down. But anyway, so I was looking for patterns that use gradients. So if you have any patterns that you like or that you've done before that's used a gradient type yarn or different tones of the same of the same color, because this is done with one color. This was different amounts of the same color in the pot. So this is true black, the Dharma color. But um, it's just using different amounts in the pot. This is not using any other tones. This is one, one dye. So um, if you have any patterns that use gradients that you're interested to share, please leave them down below or leave them in a comment in the Ravelry thread for this episode. This is episode six. Six? Right, six. Wow. Wow. Um, let me look for that pattern. See, now I'm going to look for this pattern because I'm unprofessional. Flotus. I think it's Flotus. Yes, it's the Flotus shawl. I was right the whole time. Way to go, Kayleen. So I'll put a picture again of the Flotus shawl. That, this was the shawl that I was thinking of, where you have a variegated yarn, and then you have your gradient working up your shawl, and it's, um, it's done in. So like, the variegated yarn, then you have your darkest color, then the variegated yarn, and then your mid color, and then the variegated yarn, then another mid color, and the variegated yarn. So it's worked all the way up the shawl, or it's worked down. I guess it would be worked from the lightest color, and then variegated, next lightest, variegated, next lightest, variegated. So maybe I'll do that. I don't know, but it's a lot of stitches at the end. <laughs> I'm very nervous about that. What can you tell? All right, so I'm just going to stop. I want to pick one more pink. What? I want to pick one more You want penguins? Okay. No. No, no. I want to pick one a game. You want to pick a game? Okay. Okay, so my mommy's going to end this, and I'll be right there, okay? Do you want to end this one? Do you want to put this on? Oh, that's a teddy bear. It's a teddy bear. Do you want to look in the camera? No. Come here, pretty. One. No, 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 no. <laughs> I want to pick a game. You want to pick a game? Yeah. 
Yeah? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Cece, you look so cute. I have ears. You do have ears. Uh, this is my ears. Those are your ears? Yeah. Do you like your little, your little hood? Yeah. I want to get down and see my hair <laughs> in the mirror. You want to go see your bear in the mirror? Okay, go look at the bear in the mirror. Anyway, okay, we're gonna end this now. This is all done. So, so yeah. If you have any ideas for gradient shawls or scarves or things like that, leave them in the I comments. Want me, yes. I want to pick again. Okay, mommy's gonna say bye. Do you want to say bye? Bye. Bye. So we're gonna end. I'll see you guys next week. Take it easy. Bye.